most of their appearance at Hasbrook Heights. News 12's Chris O'Donnell takes us there. Yeah, they play some football in Bergen County. And Friday night, the undefeated Hasbrook Heights Aviators let it be known they deserve to be mentioned with the festival. They've got a killer ground game. Number 29, Chris Ferdinand. Number 22, Joe Centipal. And you'll hear more about this guy in the game. And number 20, Rich DeFeo. The three of them proved to be just too much of the Secaucus Patriots. But the Aviators can do more than run. This pass may not be pretty, but it gets the job done. There's a quick check with the referee, and yes, it's a touchdown. Aviators are on the board. Defensively, Heights owned the line of scrimmage. And with this fumble, you just sort of knew that, along with death and taxes, a victory was certain. The small but loyal home crowd felt it too. Hey, you're on TV. Remember Joe Centipal? Well, late in the first quarter, he scores the first of his four touchdowns. Heights goes up 14-0. And it just got worse for the Secaucus Patriots. The Aviators had their mojo working in this game, folks, winning 41-6. As for Centipal, has 214 yards on top of four touchdowns. Hooray, Joe! In Hasbrook Heights, Chris O'Donnell, News 12 Sports. And Hasbrook now plays the winner of the Becton Bogota game. That'll be tomorrow. Let's hit Group Four. Sports look. We continue on, and we go to the North One Group One. You know, in 1998, don't ignore the roar coming right off Route 17 South from those, those Aviators of Hasbrook Heights, undefeated at eight and oh, you can't ask them to do any more. Led by the big boys in the trenches. A real good offensive line, opening the holes up for a prime timer. And Joe Centipal out of the backfield. Head coach Nick Del Caso's defense, only on two occasions have they let up more than seven points. These guys are solid on both sides of the ball. They were at home taking on Secaucus, a team they had beaten earlier, earlier this year, 41 to nothing. Tough task for the Secaucus Patriots. Back we go to Friday night, right off Route 17 at Hasbrook Heights. Here we go. First quarter, Hasbrook Heights QB, Joe Colangelo, looking. He's looking for Mike Carsage. Carsage goes down, just catches in the old bread basket, 7-0 for Hasbrook Heights in this game. Secaucus, on to the offense. The one thing you don't want to do when you're underdog, fumble right there. Chris Ferdinand recovers it for Hasbrook Heights. They don't take long. Just a couple plays later, Joe sent to Powell. Look at Joe, running hard. Head down, rolling forward inside the five-yard line. And when Joe starts, Joe finishes. Right side, little cut back inside, pay dirt. 14 to nothing, Hasbro Heights. More Joe. Joe, right side. Look at him. Just keeps the legs going. Keeps it going. Gone. Joe sent to Powell, 51 yards on this one. Blackjack, 21 to nothing. Hasbro Heights over Secaucus. Third quarter, the Patriots from Secaucus go to the bag of tricks. Look at QB, Robert Dorn, hits Ron Crowley. The lateral, and Crowley throws the bomb to Elio Tejada. For the score, Secaucus, 75 yards on this one. The two-point conversion would fail. Good look in play, let's take another look. Watch it again. Dorn in the QB, the lateral to Crowley, which makes him eligible to throw the ball again. He just unloads it to De Tejada. Tejada behind the defense. Turns on the juice from there. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Keith Jackson in his final year. Yes, sir. Jim Quimby, one of our guys, does the best Keith Jackson. Move on with the highlights. Here we go. But it was a run, Joe, run kind of day. Joe, center pal, continues just to run wild on this day. Look at this guy go. Tough runner inside is Joe. How about some balance on this team? Rich DeFeo takes his turn. Look at him. Right side to the 10, 5, count it. 23 yards for Rich. Nice job by him. 28 to 6. Hasbro Heights is opening it up. Secaucus QB, Robert Dornan. He was in trouble all day. Look at the pressure right here from the Aviators defense. Just has to throw it. Picked off. Mike Carsage right there. Mike gets the interception. Hasbro Heights takes over. Two plays later, DeFeo. Really nice, nifty running right here. Inside the 10 yard line goes DeFeo. Couple plays later, punch it in Joe, they call him. Punch it in Joe. Right side, yes. Put it on the board. 34 to six, Hasbrook Heights all over Secaucus. Once again, Secaucus, Dornan looking. Teammate, deflection, Orlando Trinidad into the hands of Pete Santana. Santana, oye como va? Indeed, all right. And then it's to fail. Explodes up the field for nice yardage right there. This one was all but over into the fourth quarter. Joe, 
the scoring machine. Joe, it's all aviators in this one, 41 to 6, and Joe is the man. We're just looking forward to uh, playing next week, uh, either Bogota or Becton. They're going to be tough, uh, and we're going to see who wins, and we're going to uh, prepare real hard for them next week. I think next week's going to be a big game, either Becton or Bogota. Becton, we played tough first game, 13 nothing. we beat them. That's going to be a tough game in Bogota. We want them. We want a little bit of revenge for next last season when they beat us in double overtime. So we're expecting a big game this week, tough game. We need a lot of practice. I think tonight was important because we played this team early in the year. We bounced back, playing the game, playing a team, a good team twice is pretty tough. And I thought Joe Senepel had a great night for us, and uh, so did our offensive line. Yes, Hasbro Heights just steamrolling towards a state championship they should be playing in December. Okay, let's move on right now. And the home field advantage for the final. But in the other corner, phase two of the BPSL weekend. Yes. Glen Rock, part of that BPSL wrecking ball, 10 and 1, but the best kind of 10 and 1. They had won 10 consecutive games. The Red Swarm defense, the sophomore QB, Scotty Steven, who had just been the man down the stretch. Evan Quinn and company, the definition of football and success, balance and firepower. All the chips are on the table for Group 1. Back we go to Saturday afternoon. Hasbro Kites, let's get it on, fellas. Yeah, there's Alan Diet right there for Glen Rock, Nick Dilk, Cazzo. Hey, slick Nick right there for Hasbro Kites. Glenn Rock stepping up big girly. LaRon Ankle batting down a third down pass attempt by the QB Joe Calangelo. Look at some of the crowd on hand. Another one of the outstanding crowds. Second quarter Hasbro Kites stops Glenn Rock on a third and long. Scotty Stevens under hot pursuit and is brought down by Chris Ferdinand and Steve Rinaldi. Nice job, fellas. Hasbro Kites takes over on fourth and one. Joe Centipal. Gets the dive and the first down right there. Next play. They go to Rich DeFeo. If it's not Joe, it's Rich. Gets some yardage the hard way. Grant Adams right there. Big time hit. Then back to Joe they go. He gets the toss. Picks up good yardage in the first down. Taking some people with him is Joey. Next play. Joe gets the call again, but this time Matt Pacelli is there along with a host of other Panthers. Nice job by the Glen Rock defense. They would be the story on this day. Third and long for Hasbro Heist. Watch. Off the play action. Colangelo. Hits Mike Carthage. Mike is all alone. That's a touchdown right there. They sucked up the defense on the play action. Caps off an 11 play. 62 yard drive. 7 nothing Hasbro Heist. But Hasbro Heist celebration short lived. Scotty Stevens. Roll. Avoids the rush. Hits Lee Ron right there. Lee Ron is off to the races down the right sideline for a big play. Then Scotty Stevens. Look it. Goes to Leron again. Out in the flat. Little quick hitch. Leron. Good yardage right there. Next play. Steven looking again. This kid is looking good. Grant Adams in the end zone for the touchdown. That's a seven play, 74 yard drive, and it's seven all. Good ball game, says the Hasbro Heights cheerleader. We go to the third quarter. Glen Rock D. Led by Kelly Vanderbeck. They just rack up Joe Santa Pop. There they go to Swarmer. Next possession, is it the San Francisco 49ers? No, it's Scott Stevens to Grant Adams. Little hitch pass, gone. Adams with his impersonation of Jerry Rice. He even impressed the former receiver, Damian Riley. 13 to seven, Glenn Rock has the lead. But on the ensuing kickoff, this is why Joe Sensapal is a big time player. The team's a little down, he takes the kickoff. You know what? Here's a spark for you, fellas. 48 yards on the return to the Glen Rock 27-yard line, but four straight plays. Four straight plays, and Glen Rock D shut him down. Sent to Paul, met by the Dave Clark five. Next play, Rich DeFeo, met by Gerald Pascarelli. Oh, man. Then they go to Joe. Joe finally gets a little room right here. Gets some of the yards back. We bring up fourth down. Fourth down, they go to Joe. But here comes the Glen Rock D. Just flat out stingy, boy. They were dictating in this game. Glen Rock takes over. Scotty Steven again throws the hits to Grant Adams. Steps out, makes a move. Look at Grant Adams. He's just orchestrating on this day. He was having a day. 22 yards. Very next play. Scott looking. Look at this pass. Craig Angelo. Yes. 
touchdown, Scotty Stevens. Glenn Rock is up 19 to 7. The sophomores lead them. Fourth quarter, Hasbrook Heights with a crack at the end zone. Colangelo throws one up. It's almost picked off by Owen Mealy. Hasbrook Heights would take another shot. This time, Owen Mealy will get the pick. Owen saw it all the way. End of threat. That was a huge play in this ball game. A huge play. Hasbrook Heights would get the ball back. They need to score twice. They take another shot. Chris Ferdinand. Nice adjustment he makes right there on the ball. Out of boy, Chris. That's a big time play inside the five yard line. But on the next play, say it isn't so, Joe. Center pile loses the handle. He's been too good to criticize him. Joe would get it back on the next possession. Hits Ryan McDermott. McDermott gets down to the one. But the time was just running out. Final play, Colangelo is stuffed on the quarterback sneak. Let the celebration begin. Glen Rock, the Panthers, lose the first game, run the table since Hasbrook Heights, a big time year, come up short. Today's game was a tough one. Hasbrook Heights, they played their hearts out. They played a great game. We just gave it our all, came out on top. We're state champs. We knew they had three great running backs and a, and a very experienced offensive line. And our front line just came out and dominated the game. They came out and did a great job, kept the quarterback on the run, and he threw up some balls. We had a real hard week of practice. We did everything right. We came out here, we showed them what we got, and uh, we stopped them on defense, put a couple of points up on offense. They're real good today. Receivers had a great game. Scott Stevens, a great quarterback. And, uh, great job by the goal line. A couple of fumbles felt great. Now it's time to go celebrate. Thank you, yes, baby. Yeah, it's my rock. It's the greatest feeling in the world. I mean, we've worked so hard. We've been working since June, uh, whether it's running, lifting, practicing for summer league tournaments, but uh, all that hard work in the offseason really paid off this year. What a thrill to win it. I'm so happy for the seniors. You know, they've worked so hard, and they were, you know, they showed such great leadership uh, over the summer with the weight training and the summer passing legs, and it, I'm so, so thrilled for them because they deserve this more than anyone, and it's, they just deserve to win a state championship, and I'm just so happy for them. Yeah, Coach Deer right there, his boys, Glen Rock, winning a state championship on the road against an undefeated Hasbro Heights club that was just outstanding. Some good football was played on the side of Route 17 in 1998, but Glen Rock goes in there and gets it done. You saw the emotion of the guys, and Scotty Stevens filling in for the injured QB. What a ride, man. Tough act to follow. Take a quick break. We're back. With